Hello, Virgo Falcons. I am back with A Boy Called Bat, written by Alana K. Arnold, illustrated by Charles Santoso, and it's published by the Walden Pond Press. Today we are going to be reading chapters 18, 17 and 18. We've met Bat, we've met Janie, we've met his mother, we've met his father, we've met his teacher, Mr. Grayson. We know that Bat is a very lovable and unusual young man, and we know his mother is a veterinarian. They have rescued a newborn baby skunk, which is called a kit, and Bat is determined to keep the skunk for as long as he can. Mother's plan is to return him to the rescue mission within a month. Bat wants to keep the kit for longer, and he has gone to his teacher, Mr. Grayson, and Mr. Grayson has helped him email Dr. Jerry Dragoo, who is a skunk expert, and Bat has asked Dr. Dragoo to tell his mother that it's really okay for Bat to keep the skunk. So, chapter 17, at the clinic. Bat loved going to Mom's veterinary clinic. If it were up to him, he would go with her every time she had to work late instead of staying home with Janie. But Mom said that as much as she loved having Bat at work with her, all his questions sometimes kept the vet techs from doing their jobs. Bat tried not to ask so many questions, but there were so many interesting things to ask questions about. Today, can you help Lawrence with baths? Mom told Bat as she drove him the three miles from the Sawet School to the small brick building marked Valerie Tam DVM. Janie was always trying to get Mom to rename her veterinary clinic something else. Something fun, she'd say. Something creative. So far, she had, ex she had suggested the Furry Friends Clinic, pause for a moment, veterinarian, nose to tail and everything in between, and her favorite, the Paspital. But Bat liked seeing Mom's name on the side of the building. It was like she was a celebrity. I'm good at baths, Bat said. Yes, Mom said. You are. When he pulled open the heavy glass door at the front of the brick building, Bat was overwhelmed by smells and sounds. The lavender peppermint spray they used to clean up pet accidents, the wet dog scent of shampooing going on in the back room, barking, 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 a phone ringing, people talking, a cat's yowl. If there were this much ruckus at school or the playground or anywhere else at all, Bat would definitely need his earmuffs. But here, the sounds and the smells didn't bother him. Even the flickering fluorescent light didn't irritate him very much. Suzanne stood behind the counter running a lady's credit card through the machine with one hand while she answered the ringing phone with the other. Dr. Tam's office, she said, waving hello as Bat walked by. He waved back, but he didn't bother to say anything because he didn't want to bother her. It used to be that he didn't notice if people were busy with other things, but he was way better now. At least he usually was. An old lady, old like a grandmother, sat on the bench in the waiting room. She held a box on her lap. Bat stopped in front of her. What kind of animal do you have in that box? It's my cat, Pickles, the lady said. He's not feeling 100%. What are his symptoms? Bat asked. Are you the veterinarian? The lady asked. No, said Bat, not yet. Ah, said the lady, well, he has indigestion and he hasn't been very hungry lately. There were lots of things that could be. Bat looked up at his mom who stood next to him listening. She shrugged. I'll have to examine Pickles to know what's wrong, she said. Then she turned to the lady. I'll see you and Pickles in just a minute or two. Well, I hope Pickles feels better soon, Bat said. Then he followed Mom through the door that separated the waiting room from the back and watched as she took her white coat from its hook. She put it on, and then Mom was Dr. Tam, a veterinarian, better than a superhero. One day, Bat would also have a jacket, just like Mom's, it would be white, and it would have five buttons, and it would have the words Dr. Tam, D-V-M, embroidered just above his heart. 
of this, that was 99.9% sure because that was as sure as you could get about anything. I've got to go see patients, Mom said. You stay close to Lawrence and be a help, okay? Hey, Bat Boy, what's up? Lawrence was the... Oh, goodness, turning pages seems to be a problem for me. Lawrence was the only person who called Bat, Bat Boy. Mom rescued a skunk kit, and we're raising it. She says we have to give him to a rescue in a month. Well, three weeks now, but I am going to change her mind. We named him Thor, Bat said. Lawrence said, sighed. I know all about the kit, he said. Who do you think is taking care of him while you're at school? You are, said Bat. Are you doing a good job? Lawrence rumpled Bat's hair, and Bat smoothed it down again. Of course I'm doing a good job, Lawrence said. It's the only kind of job I know how to do. Look, he reached into the neck of his shirt and pulled out the strangest necklace Bat had ever seen. It was made of t-shirt material and ended in a little pouch just big enough for cradling a skunk kit. Is Thor in there? Bat asked. Lawrence nodded. Yep. The little guy seemed kind of lonely in the kennel, so I made a sling for him out of one of my old t-shirts last night. See? Snug as a bung in a rug. Lawrence opened the pouch so that Bat could see inside. There was Thor, curled into a little sleeping ball. Here's the picture of Lawrence and Bat. And the sling with the skunk in it. Can I wear him? Bat asked. Of course. We don't want him to get wet when I'm washing the dogs. Here. Very carefully, Lawrence pulled the sling up over his head and then lowered it over Bat's. But the sling, which had barely reached Lawrence's chest, sank all the way to Bat's belly button. We can fix that, said Lawrence. And he hoped he looped the fabric into a knot behind Bat's neck to shorten the sling. There, he said, now you're a marsupial bat. There are no marsupial bats, Bat said. Marsupial infants need to have strong arms and claws to climb into their mother's pouches. Bats have wings. Bat peered into the pouch to see if Thor had been disturbed by the movement, but the kit was still fast asleep. He's got more fur than he had this morning, Bat said. I can see the black and white growing in. They grow up so fast, Lawrence said. You seem bigger than the last time I saw you, too. Not you, said Bat, closing up the pouch and tucking it into his shirt. You're already all the way big. Lawrence grinned. If I get any bigger, I'll have to buy special order shoes. I already wear the biggest size the shoe store sells. Good thing you're too old to grow, Bat said. Good thing indeed, said Lawrence. Then he said, Thor is a great name, Bat. Did you come up with it? No, said Bat. Janie did. You're a lucky kid to have such a creative sister, Lawrence said. Did you thank her? No, said Bat. Not yet. Well, there will be time for that later, Lawrence said. How about assisting me with some baths? Usually Bat would do just about anything to help Lawrence with baths. But now, with Thor in the sling curled up in his sleep... I don't know, Bat said. Don't worry about the kit, Lawrence said. You can wear an apron, and I'll do all the soapy stuff. Lawrence draped a green apron around Bat's neck. Bat tried to make sure it wasn't pressing too tight against the sling as Lawrence tied the waist, the waist strap. All good, Lawrence asked. I can't tell if Thor is still breathing, Bat said. Maybe it's too tight. Lawrence untied the strap, and Bat took off the apron. He pulled open the sling and peered inside. There was Thor, still tightly curled into a little ball, still fast asleep. He's okay, sighed Bat. Lawrence patted Bat's shoulder. Maybe you can just keep me company today. How does that sound, Bat boy? Better, said Bat. I can supervise. <laughs> Good idea, Lawrence said. You can tell me when I use too much soap. That's easy, said Bat, following Lawrence into the holding room where the dogs waited in separate kennels for their bath. You always use too much soap. Bat climbed up on a counter across from the big silver wash basin and watched as Lawrence bent down to open the far kennel. He scooped up a shaggy white poodle who didn't look very happy about what was about to happen. You're okay, Jeff, Lawrence said. He was using his soothing voice, calm and deep. 
Jeff's a funny name for a poodle, Bat said. Well, Bat's a funny name for a kid, Lawrence answered, setting Jeff into the wash basin before smiling at Bat. Bat smiled back. Then Lawrence got to work, slipping Jeff's head into a restraint so he couldn't jump out of the tub, then turning on the faucet and running his hand under the water to check the temperature before he started spraying the dog down. That's a new restraint, isn't it? Bat asked. Good eye, said Lawrence. He shut off the water and began massaging shampoo into Jeff's curly pelt. The other one was getting rusty, so I ordered this new model. Is that a suction cup connecting it to the wall? It sure is, said Lawrence, and a strong one, too. He grabbed a hold of the rope and tugged on it to show Bat how well it was connected to the wall. With a loud pop, the suction cup came free. Jeff didn't waste any time. With an excited yip, he scrambled over the lip of the wash basin, leaped to the ground, bubbles everywhere. He slipped and slid when he landed, his nails scraping across the linoleum floor. Lawrence reached to grab him, but Jeff was too fast. He scrambled toward the door. Here's a picture of a wet, soapy poodle running away. Bat pulled his legs up onto the counter and crossed them, one arm wrapped wrapping protectively around Thor in his sling. The air smelled like warm, wet dog and strawberry shampoo. Lawrence's fingers were inches away from Jeff when his heel found a puddle of soapy water. One moment he was standing, and the next moment he was flat on his back. <gasps> Are you okay? Bat asked, but he didn't climb down from his perch. His first priority was keeping the kit safe and dry. I've been better, Lawrence groaned. Jeff, who had discovered that the door was closed tight, turned to peer down at Lawrence. He lowered his head and lovingly licked Lawrence's cheek with his long pink tongue. Chapter 18. Dinner Date. Maybe the best moment of the whole day was when Bat finally left Thor rustling in the pouch that hung from Bat from around Bat's neck. Thor woke from his nap just when Lawrence was finishing his last bath, which was for an inky spaniel named Webster. Lawrence, Bat said, Thor is waking up. Bat pulled open the sling and gently extracted the kit from the kit from it, holding Thor's warm, wiggly body up to his cheek. The kit's nose twitched as he snuffed around. Baby wants his milk, Lawrence said, and together they fed him. If Bat had his way, he would wear Thor in the sling all the time, but Mom made him take it off at bath time and bedtime. She was willing to compromise at dinner. Really, Bat. Don't you think Thor would be more comfortable in his enclosure, Mom said, as she served out three platefuls of spaghetti and meatballs? No, said Bat, I really don't. Mom squinted her eyes tight. When she opened them, she said, Okay, Thor can join us for dinner, as long as he stays in the sling. I'll bet when he's older, though, Thor will love spaghetti and meatballs, Bat said happily, twirling a messy forkful of noodles. Skunks eat everything, you know. They're omnivores. Omni meaning everything. Vor meaning one who eats. We know, Bat, said Janie. You told us already, like a hundred times. Don't you think it's interesting? asked Bat. Don't I think what is interesting? And there's Bat twirling his spaghetti and meatballs on his plate. Everything, said Bat. Everything there is to know about animals. Not really, said Janie. I think theater is way more interesting than animals. That's stupid, said Bat, because it was. Bat, said Mom in her warning voice, deep and serious with her eyebrows pointed toward her nose. I'm sorry I said your interest is stupid, said Bat. He wasn't actually sorry because Janie's interest was stupid. Theater was pretend. Animals were real. But Mom had let him bring Thor to the dinner table. So Bat turned his mouth up in a smile and added, Will you forgive me? Mom liked it when he remembered to say that. Whatever, Janie said. Mom, did you make any garlic bread? Oh, it's in the oven. It's probably done, Mom said. Janie pushed back from the table, found an oven mitt in the drawer, and pulled the tray of bread out of the oven. It smelled wonderful. Ezra once said that garlic is the best smell in the world, even better than roses, Janie said, putting the bread slices into a basket and bringing it to the table. That Ezra is a character, Mom said. 
He's pretty funny, Janie said. He even makes our math teacher laugh, and she doesn't think anything is funny. If she doesn't think anything is funny, Bat said, reaching across the table for a piece of bread, then why does she laugh at Ezra? Is it mean laughing? No, Bat, said Janie. She thinks Ezra is funny. Then why did you say she doesn't think anything is funny? Never mind, Bat, said Janie. Bat took a bite of the garlic bread. The crust was crusty, and then the inside was hot and squishy. Melted butter glazed his fingers, which he licked one by one. They ate for a few minutes without talking. The only sounds, the crunch of biting into bread, and the scraping noise of forks against plates as they wound bites of spaghetti. Then Janie announced, I've decided I'm going to audition for the queen. I thought you wanted to be Alice, Mom said. That was before I read the script, Janie said. Then I realized that Alice is boring. She just wanders around whining about everything. You'd be good at that part, Bat said. You're good at whining. Mom, whined Janie, make him stop. Bat, said Mom, that wasn't nice. But I said she'd make a good Alice, Bat said. Not for a good reason, Mom explained. Why does the reason matter? I gave her a compliment. I don't think it felt like a compliment to Janie, Mom said. Janie did it to... Janie, did it feel like a compliment to you? No, said Janie, it was an insult. You see, Bat, said Mom, it wasn't a compliment to Janie. Suddenly, Bat wished that he had been wearing his earmuffs and that he hadn't even heard Mom and Janie talking about the play. Sometimes it was just better if Bat kept his thoughts to himself. Bat ate a few more bites of his spaghetti and had almost finished all his bread when he felt Thor wiggling around in his pouch. "'May I be excused?' he asked. "'Yes,' said Janie. "'Honey, you know it's up to you to model good behavior,' Bat heard Mom say to Janie as he headed to the refrigerator to get out the puppy formula. Sometimes, Mom, even I'm not good enough actress to pretend not to notice when Bat is being weird. Oh, Janie, said Mom. Get out the formula, Bat to told himself. Put some in the syringe. Warm it up. Ignore Janie. Bat knew that sometimes Janie thought he was weird, but he still didn't like to hear her say it out loud. Actually, Janie could be weird, too. Like when she sang at the top of her lungs in the shower, even though there wasn't an audience, and how she cared if her hair was wavy or straight. Did Ezra, did Ezra ever think that Janie was weird? Maybe that's what made Ezra her friend, Bat thought. He likes the part of her that everyone else thinks are weird. And that is the end of chapter 18. Tomorrow will be chapters 19 and 20. Until then, boys and girls, 